Hey, what's going on? Joe in Vegas. Going to do another review. I saw a couple shows this weekend, so I will uh, throw another review up. Again, I, I do it. I don't know if anybody listens to this. If they do and you enjoy it, very cool. Uh, these are just my experiences at some of these shows. I do it a lot for uh, YouTube because uh, they tell me they want more original content so they don't shut me down again. So I figure, why not? No different than talking to a friend and letting them know how a concert was that they were thinking of going to. So if this helps anybody... Uh, Decide whether they want to go see a show when it comes to town. Very cool. If it doesn't help anybody and you're just so fucking bored that you need to hear me, then that's cool too. Um, so this is the review of Machine Gun Kelly. Not normally something I would go see. I, I always consider myself as a 45-year-old aging rock guy, hair metal guy, classic rock guy. Um, but I've always been very proud of myself and never becoming a music snob. I really try to open up to most music and and lately i think a lot of the newer music to me has been getting better i think there was a period for the last uh, at least five or ten years where it was really this like thug rapper you know that takashi whatever like that kind of they're singing about clubs and bottles and money and pussy and dick and fucking killing people and it there's nothing to it there's very little beats there's it's that mumble rap you know i i have a feeling that wet ass pussy song kind of was the the peak of that whole like okay this is getting stupid already it's not even fucking music it's just kind of shock value and in the last year i think uh, maybe it was covid you see a lot of these a lot of these acts, even people like Bieber, who I saw a couple weeks back, is getting better, in my opinion. It's not poppy, junk, bubblegum shit. His music's getting better. He's getting older. He's having maybe more life experiences, and he's learning how to write about it instead of just being a manufactured product for a label or something. So something similar happened, I think, with Machine Gun Kelly in these last bunch of years where he went from kind of this rapper – to putting out this album, which is, uh, I think it's called Tickets to My Downfall. And I've heard the songs, and I've liked the songs. They, they remind me similar of Blink-182. I know Travis Barker's on a couple songs. I know they're friends, so I have to imagine he was pretty involved with Machine Gun in writing this album. Um, but it feels like a, like a 2000s kind of punk rock kind of sound, and it's got a lot of hits on it that are very catchy and... You know, if you're not stuck up and you can just listen to the music and appreciate it, there's some rap influences too. It's got like this punk rock kind of little bit of rap uh, vibe in, in the music, at least in the hits. So when he came to town, I got comped a couple tickets. So I thought, why not? I'll go check him out. Uh, I've never seen him. Uh, everybody else who was playing that night, I've seen a couple times. So to jump into it, uh, there was an opening act. I looked him up after. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Jackson, Jason, JXDN. Uh, also, I kind of heard one or two of those songs on the radio. I think Angels and Demons was, was one of the songs. I, I put it online. I put the video up on my web channel. Not bad. I mean, I don't know. Very, that seemed very manufactured. Uh, but Machine Gun Kelly was the one I kind of was interested in seeing. Um, the guy's a showman. I give him credit, man. He He's really good at... He knows his lane, and he stays in it. He knows that girls love him. He knows that... He's got the right look. He's got a really unique, tall, skinny look. Um, you know, I remember him. He played Tommy Lee in, in that Motley Crue thing on Netflix. And there was a show on Showtime years ago called Roadies, I think. That was fucking great. Great show. It's about the roadies of a, of an aging uh, rock and roll band. And he was in that, too. And I think he has a background in acting, which lends itself to his, to his show and to his persona and i think he he i think he's an actor i think he's a pretty smart guy and i think he plays into that persona pretty well and he's good at it and uh the one thing i noticed i thought was weird and it seemed a little forced but whatever i know this is the gen he was very pushing the whole drug thing i mean he came out and said hey i'm high i'm fucking mushrooms he had a fucking joint in his hand the entire show the set design was big pill bottles and even the drummer was in a pipe uh, it seemed a little like, I don't know, man, you know, we've all done our share of shit, and to me it was like, the guys who talk about it were like the fucking nerd guys, the, the, the ones that were quiet about it were like, that's, those were the guys who were doing it for different reasons, not, so I thought that was a little forced, but again, I like him, I do like him, and I do like his music, he's got a lot of hits, um, 
I don't want to get into all the songs. He plays a lot. He plays about 30 songs. I know a lot of his songs are, are short. But, you know, Kiss Kiss, Drunk Face. Uh, he had little movies in between each thing. He had little, like, they're short. They're maybe 30 seconds. He had a little movie with him and Pete Davidson smoking weed and alien masks, which was kind of funny. Uh, he had a nice heartwarming video with his dad about about uh, his childbirth and stuff like that. Had little little things in between to break it up, probably to do set changes because the set was pretty elaborate. Had these big skulls, and, uh, you know, he had did some wardrobe changes. Um, you know, he did a couple cover songs. Uh, let's see, Sick and Tired, Fuck You, Goodbye. Uh, he did a great cover of uh, Misery Business by Paramore, which is a great song. So it was cool to hear a, a male voice on it, and it's just a great song. So it doesn't matter who's singing it. But he's got, he goes into his hits, Paper Cuts. My Ex Best Friend is a, is a great fucking song. I love that. Uh, he goes into a good four, five, six song portion, which was his rap, from his rap career, I think, where it was just rapping. I think my opinion, and again, I'm an old aging rock and roll guy, He's average. He's an average rapper, I think. He's good. I mean, it's good. He's got the right look and da da da. But it maybe it's just the music. It's not him. I don't want to say it's him. I think it's just the music. It sounds like everything else out there. His rock. I think he's good at it. I think he should stay in that and keep doing that. I think it's good. It's unique. It's something the industry, the music industry needs, is more rock and less of these generic guys sit at home and make rap. But. There's five or six songs. I know why he did it. He did it for his fans. That's great. I get it. But if he took that whole section out and just stayed with The Rock for this album, which is a rock album, I think it would have been a better show. It wouldn't have been as long. But it was a very good show. I really liked it. Um, then he went into I Think I'm Okay, which is a great, great, great song. Uh, I was actually curious how he does. Cause some of his songs have duets. Like That song has a young Youngblood. I think that's the guy's name. He has a pretty substantial part of that song that he sings and same with uh, Forget Me Too where uh, Halsey sings, uh, sings a good portion of that song so I was wondering if they'd had her up on screen but he basically just steps away from the microphone and the track plays of, of uh, Youngblood or, or Halsey and he just kind of dances around in the meantime but it works it works during one of these songs I forgot and this is a big part that people are they love and they're crazy about that I put the video up there. You should watch it. It's kind of interesting if you like the gossip stuff. He started climbing up on the balconies, which I think is his thing. He likes to climb. And he gets to the railing of the balcony, and then you realize he's standing right next to Megan Fox, and everybody goes crazy, and she looks good. The cool part of that, honestly, is you can see she's a real fan. She was singing every word to the song. She was gushing at him. You could tell she was just fanboying out like 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 the rest of his fans. So I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that, I don't remember exactly where he did that in the show. Uh, but you can watch my video on there. Um, he did Lonely, which I think he did started acoustic as a guitar, which was a nice touch. Forget Me Too. I like that song a lot. That's a that's a great, great song. Oh, there's another nice moment in the show, too, where he pulled a little four-year-old kid out of the crowd. Kid had a uh, little pink acoustic guitar like ukulele, and kid was all decked out. And he brought the kid on stage. He made the kid feel like a million bucks. He let the kid play on stage with him for the entire song. I don't remember what song it was. Very cool moment, kind of a... It's what I said. Like he, He's a little bit of an actor. I think deep down he's a good guy. He, he plays this hard, tough drug addict, but I, I think that's him playing his persona. If I, if, it could be way off, but to me it seems pretty see-through. But again, not a bad thing. 90% of acts out there are bullshit. They're not who these people are. I think he's well aware of his image. I think he's got a really good thing that he's nailing on the head right now between the acting, the girlfriend, the gossip columns, the rock album. I think he's hitting it on all cylinders. And he makes it for an interesting guy and an interesting show. It's a good show. I like rock and roll. I don't know. I knew maybe five songs. But I thought a lot of the show, a lot of songs I didn't know were, were pretty good. They are not good fucking catchy stuff songs. He did a Hangover Cure. He did Drawbreaker, and then he closed out with uh, Bloody Valentine. So, all in all, it was a good show. The crowd was packed. It was a young crowd. I, I did feel like the chaperone at a at a high school dance, but whatever. You know, <laughs> it is what it is, you know. But uh, it was good. I enjoyed it. I would absolutely go see him again. If you're even a little bit of a fan like I was, I, I would go see him. I think he's an interesting guy. It, I say it in all of my videos, it, it is better than sitting on the fucking couch and watching Netflix. It's just, it's healthier to go out, it's good for the soul, all music is good for the soul, 
go see as much as you can. I'm very lucky. I live in Vegas. There's shows all the time. If the tickets aren't free, they're super duper cheap. So I'm lucky. I can do that. But go see them. It's good. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing. Uh, I'm doing more. I'm going to try doing ratings like uh, Portnoy's Pizza. So I say on a scale of 1 to 10, if you made it this far in the video and you give a shit. I would say this show's a solid 7, 5, 8, somewhere in that ballpark. Let's say 7.7 score. It's a solid show. I liked it. And uh, go see it. All right. That's it for now. I don't even know what the next show is. Take care. I'll see you at the next show. Bye-bye.